so this was the framework we are going to start with uh, we started yesterday and uh, we have complete on uh, uh, we have completed one part of this automation layer that was the contract next what we were doing is implementation so today we'll try to complete implementation and then we will start with uh, application layer before application layer we have to complete design patterns and in design pattern all the three design patterns we will cover after that if time permits then we'll start with application layer otherwise uh, target for today is completing these implementations and uh, learning all the three design patterns if time permits we'll start with application layer as well okay so this is an agenda today let's quickly jump on to eclipse then so uh, yesterday we started with this modular framework 23 1 2 uh, 2017 in that uh, first is common labs in common labs we have created contracts and we have created one folder with name implementation in contracts i created around uh, these 11 uh, class files out of these common driver and common element controls were done so common driver is the one class where all the methods relate which which can be directly performed on a browser are given uh, like get text uh, sorry not get text get title uh, navigate to a browser uh, url uh, all those methods which can be directly performed on a browsers are uh, browser is written in common driver next we will be doing is common element control wherein uh, we will be uh, wherein uh, we have uh, written all those methods which are common to all the elements whether it's a checkbox or a radio button or a text box like clicking on all these will remain same whether you are clicking on an element uh, that element is a link or it's a button or it's a radio button or it's a checkbox it does not matter clicking will be clicking so like this whichever uh, method is possible uh, on which is uh, common we have written here like click get text get attribute get css value is enabled is visible is selected and so on then we will start with the remaining ones uh, like alert checkbox all these things so let's quickly start with the first one that is alert handling so i'll create a class and i'll call it alert controls And this alert controls will implements implements alert handling. Okay, and uh, it will ask you to add uh, all unimplemented methods. So yeah, I just added them. Then uh, so first method is <coughs> sorry first method is accept alert okay now just recall how you do alerts so in alerts we first of all create an alert okay alert uh, will be will take uh, from org.openk.selenium and it's an interface and let's say i created uh, one instance of it and then uh, what was the way you can initialize an alert driver dot switch to but for that you need instance of driver that is you need instance of your browser now uh, your browser was something which was divide decide or defined in common driver class right here we have our driver instance that means we need to pass this driver instance in this alert class right we can use the same uh, driver instance because if i'll uh, initialize a new one in this that will be a new a browser instance which will open so you cannot initialize your browser instance in each and every class uh, using the new keyword then what you'll do in this thing let me quickly show you so in that case what you can do is create a constructor okay and before this create one private variable private web driver driver you can give the same name you can give the different name and then in the controller um, uh, and sorry and in the and then in the constructor get that instance from outside 
okay get the instance from outside and initialize class level driver with argument level driver so how uh, things will work things will work like this uh, you have common driver uh, in your common driver class you have private web driver which is initialized with either Chrome or Mozilla or um, Internet Explorer in the third class I created another web driver instance okay creating another web driver instance is not a problem initialization is problem so what we'll do this driver which we have created locally in this class okay we will uh, update it with the one which will take from outside so there will be another another area okay somewhere in um, let's say in your test class you will create another class in the, in the demo common driver only you can do that okay in that you have to give the browser instance from here to this class via constructor but then now the question will come that in this common driver method uh, in this common driver class this web driver is a private instance so how can you uh, give that so just recall uh, Java concepts and we discuss that when uh, you have defined any variable as private variable and you want to give it access to the outer world you have something known as getters and setters to do that so here you have to give the value that means you will be needing one getter so here we will be writing one getter so it will be public void get web driver get driver will be the name of the method and the return type will be whatever you are returning so the return type will be web driver here and in in this you will simply write a return driver okay so public web driver get driver is the method name of the method then return driver uh, because driver is the instance of web driver class and that is what you are returning so uh, this will return from here and you will get that in uh, wherever you will add so any questions so from here using this get driver method you are returning and here in alert class uh, using the constructor you are receiving in between you will take from common driver supplied to alert that I'll show you in uh, once I complete this class any questions in this maybe it will be more clear once we'll uh, go to our demo class okay so now I can initialize this alert so I was writing here it will be alert uh, alert equal to driver dot switch to dot alert right then here I have to accept an alert so it will be simply alert dot accept fine now the same um, logic I have to write in reject alert only the method will change from accept to dismiss that means this particular line or you can say getting an alert every time is like repeating right so let's do one thing this statement is repeating multiple time let's do one thing let's write one private method so it will be private return type will be alert because I'm uh, I need an alert and I'll call it get alert okay and this statement which is repeating I'll take it out move it here and I'll simply say return alert okay and here where I was writing get uh, simply alert I'll simply write get alert and everything is done now you don't have to write the complete logic again but you can simply write get alert dot dismiss similarly here when you have to get the message you'll simply write get alert dot get text 
and last is to verify as alert is present this I'll cover once I'll cover weight utility okay so let's just uh, for this I'm, I'm not writing this is alert for now once we will cover uh, weight utility that time I, I'll cover it okay so is it clear that how um, how I even moved out a single statement was which was repeating this statement that has alert alert equal to driver dot switch to dot alert was repeating multiple times in each method so I just moved it out and put it into uh, get alert method and then you are simply saying a return alert any questions here okay uh, then let's move on and the next interface we have is drop down let's quickly complete complete that so it will be right click new class it will be drop down control and here it will be implements drop down okay and here I'll say add an implemented methods okay so in this uh, what you need is select class right you need an instance of select class so let's quickly create first method let's quickly complete this uh, that is select via visible text so it will be I'll be using select class from from this open qa.selenium.support.ui let's say I'll call it as drop down equal to new select and you need to give the web driver instance sorry not web driver instance web element and now we can simply say drop down dot select via visible text and visible text is something which I'll pass here now the thing is this statement will repeat in each method right you will you have to create an instance of this select class and that will repeat in each method so I'll just take it out and create a private method so it will be private uh, return type will be select then get drop down okay and here it will be return uh, before return this will be the statement and it will be return drop down okay and it also expects a web element so you can simply say uh, web element element okay now here when I will be calling this I can say get drop down element and then method is simply select by visible text or whatever you want to call like here in uh, in this I'll simply say uh, get drop down element and it will be select via value value will be the argument correct next will be you need uh, select via visible text so for that it will be this dot select via index and index will be the argument okay so see here uh, otherwise I had to create this this drop down again and again but uh, just by taking out uh, that statement and putting it into private method now you just have to call this get drop down that's all get drop down method call this get drop down method pass that argument uh, that the web element and then call whatever method you have to call so just one line uh, is left okay here also you have to do the same thing here you need to check whether a drop down allows multiple selection or not so again it will be get drop down and the return type is and the method is is multiple 
its return type is boolean whatever it will return true or false that you can get okay next is get all options so get all options is again same this is your drop down method is get all get options so this returns all the options which we have in a drop down right then here you have get all selected options so again copy paste this method will be get all selected options done then you have uh, get first selected option so i'll just take it out get first selected option okay and its return type is web element so here you can see the return type i have kept as web element and we are done with drop down class as well any questions yes anju your question is how to how to select specific value in a drop down yeah so i gave you now first three methods are for that only first is select by visible text select by value select by index so this is these are the three methods available to select from a drop down any other questions okay uh, next is uh, uh, so we are done with the drop down as well next let's complete mouse operations so i'll just simply say class mouse operation or let's call it mouse controls and here we'll simply say implements mouse operation okay and here we will hover over it add an implemented methods okay so the first uh method here is drag and drop now if you recall how we do mouse operations we need an instance of actions class and uh, while we initialize the action class you need to pass the uh, web driver instance right that means in this particular class also we need web driver instance just like we uh, we needed in alert class so let's quickly add that so how can you do that again i'll define a private instance so it will be private web driver driver okay and in its constructor of mouse control here we will be passing web driver driver and it will be driver uh, this dot driver equal to this dot driver equal to driver and then you got the driver instance now uh, next will be i need actions class so i'll create instance of actions class it will be actions you have to take one from selenium it will be action and this one you have to take equal to new actions okay and here you need to pass driver instance now you can perform your all your operations like action dot drag and drop from element 1 to 
element to dot build dot perform right now again this statement will repeat in each method let's take it out and move it into one private method so it will be private action uh, get action and here we'll simply say return and here this action will change to get action and it's done drag and drop is done so get action so you got the instance of action class then method is drag and drop from element 1 to element 2 dot build dot perform okay so any questions here Okay, so moving on to the next one. Anshu, you have a question, actions, example of this. Is talking about drag, drag and drop example. Uh, Anshu, we have covered in our classes, so you can just go through one of the recording. Okay, because it will take time to give you an example now. Uh, you can just go through one recording. I have covered it in, in it. Okay. Okay. Then next is move to elements. Move to element is like a uh, mouse hover. Let, like you will just uh, take it to a particular uh, web, web element and hold there. So that it can give you, uh, it can perform the operation which, um, which is expected. So here it will be get action dot what you have to do move to element right which element the one you have passed is an argument dot build dot perform okay <clears throat> so i'll just copy it next will be right click so what was the method for right click anyone anyone remember what was the method for right click Okay, let me write then. It was context click. Okay, so context click, context click is used for right click. Then we have double click. So for double click, we had a method called double click only. And then we have move to element and click. So method will remain same only after this move to element will also add click and done. Okay, so mouse operation class is also done. Any questions now? okay so mouse operation is also done next is um, text box let's quickly complete text box so text box control and here I'll say implements text box Okay, and let's quickly add the implemented methods. The first one is set text and second one is clear text. Very easy. Here uh, you have the element. On this you have to call 
method like uh, send keys and argument will be what is the name of the method I mean name of the variable text to set okay then uh, next one is you need to clear so it will be element dot clear and done so this class is also done And if you think that text box control the set text and clear text, you want to move it into uh, common elements, you can move. I mean, just two methods are there, and they also can be generic ones, so you can move them to common elements. But I have created a separate class, so let it be now. Next, what is left? We are left with uh, from start, we'll go. Checkbox control is left, so let's quickly complete the checkbox. So here it will be implements check box okay let me add an implemented method okay so the method is only one method is there thing checkbox status okay so let it is uh, I mean here we will be applying one logic and that logic will be a little bit um, uh, I mean uh, it will be a good logic to understand so let's quickly uh, see what I want to achieve let's say I, ha I have this uh, uh, demo page and here if you'll see is there any checkbox no it does not have any checkbox let me add a checkbox in it Okay, so I'll quickly add a checkbox in it. Uh, it will be of input type. Type will be checkbox. Okay, and it will be slash input. Okay, and in the start, I'll say uh, uh, anything, maybe uh, want to join other courses as well okay so I just uh, added this now if I come here control F you can see uh, okay you can see I have a checkbox now okay now if I click on it you can see it it got checked once I again click on it it got unchecked whereas in radio button if you click once it is checked if you click now any number of time it will remain checked only because the radio buttons are like this that uh, out of two you can only select one right whereas in checkbox uh, the uh, it is little different here either you can select if you click on once it will get checked when if you click on again it get unchecked now just consider a scenario where your checkbox was checked and you want to keep it checked only so what you will do in that case first you will get its status and then see uh, what you want right so I'll get its status and we'll see if it is checked I'll not do anything but if it is unchecked then I'll click on it right similarly the other way around that it was unchecked and you want it to be unchecked so again you'll get its status see if it is unchecked or not if it is unchecked you'll not do anything but if it is checked then you will click on it click on it again 
this is how you can make sure that whatever you want you're doing that so that's the reason I uh, created a separate method with name check checkbox status chain checkbox status here we are passing in a web element and then we are passing one status this status will be true or false based on true if you are passing true that means you want it to be checked and if you are passing false that means you want it to be unchecked okay so this is how it will work uh, any questions in the scenario okay now I'll write like this if element is selected and you're passing your status um, sorry it will be other way around if your element is selected is selected after before that I have just put an exclamatory sign if element is selected is not selected because I put an exclamatory sign and you want it to be checked then I'll simply what I'll do element dot click similarly I'll put another condition and that condition will be if element is selected sorry is selected and you want it to be unchecked then go and click on it otherwise don't do anything now is this clear to all see what we are doing the first one is element is selected if it returns true that means element is selected and we are purposely adding an exclamatory sign that means whatever value will come I'll uh, negate it okay so if element is selected that means I'm putting an exclamatory sign that means if the element is not selected and status is true that means you want it to be selected then go and click on it next is if element is selected and you don't want it to be selected then go and click on it now these two uh, otherwise don't do anything does it achieve what we are trying to get any questions in it I didn't get the second if statement like if the element is selected if element is selected and you don't want it we don't want to yeah status see you will either pass true or false right if you are passing false that means uh, before that you have put a negative negation sign false and false will become true so element is is selected and you you want it to be not selected then go and click on it if you're passing status as false that means you don't want it how I made it true by putting an exclamatory sign that means this if statement will become true and it will go and click on it this is how it will work got it Jishin? If, it is, if it is already checked, so why we need to click on it so no to make it unchecked okay. yeah to make it unchecked because we don't we want this time it we want that it should not be checked mm, okay got it. got it yeah now uh, these two statement can be clubbed let's quickly club them okay so I just clubbed both of them because we want any one of the two to be true so if either this is true the first one or the second one is true go and click on it otherwise don't do anything so this is what we wanted to achieve any questions here So for us, this checkbox control is also done. So 
so alert handling is done checkbox is done common element is done driver is done drop down is done let's quickly see frame handling um sort of i'm sure the question okay i missed it it's your question and you how to select multiple checkbox okay so uh, how to select multiple checkbox um that depends what your requirement is like if they are some kind of options of same uh you can say menu like if you have something like uh, there is a statement which all subjects you want to enroll for and the answer to this question is multiple questions like four or five options are there in it and you want to select multiple out of that so what you can do in that case is just recall when we did links there we got all the links first and then iterated over them right so here also you have to do the same thing get all the checkbox and then uh, check only those which you want so this is you have to do so uh, based on the criteria like if you'll see the html code of a checkbox of a typical checkbox it will be like this an input of type checkbox and there will also uh, some more thing will be given like one more maybe id is given or maybe uh, some name is given most probably 90% of the time name attribute is given so get all the uh, attributes um, sorry get all the elements with one of the matching criteria you will get all the check boxes let's say then i trade over each check box and click on those which you want okay so that's how you can um, do so for this the method to get all the check box will be got uh, dot get uh, sorry find elements will be the method which will return you a list of web elements and then using for enhanced for loop you can iterate over each checkbox click which is the desired one and leave which is not clear anju yes but i have to do yeah you have to do bit yes bit of i have to do yeah and should you have to do logic you can just check out the html code of i mean sorry the java code of uh, how we got all the links just instead of link it will be checkbox rest everything will remain same okay so try it if you'll uh, face any issue let me know i'll help you but yeah, it's very simple uh, logic once you'll try it you'll be able to do it okay so moving on to the next one uh, next we have is what we were doing uh, frame handling right yeah so i'll call it frame controls and i'll say implements frame handling add an implemented method okay so again to switch to a frame you need instance of browser that means i'll be uh, defining one private variable private web driver driver and then i need the constructor so it will be frame controls and here it will be web driver driver and it will be this dot driver equal to driver okay so we got the driver instance next is switch to a frame so it will be like 
frame it will be driver dot switch to dot frame and which frame based on frame ID so I can simply pass this frame ID here okay so first method was to switch to frame this is the command next is switching to frame when an element is given that means when an ID is not available then we can simply change it to element then the next one will be switching when an index is given so I can simply pass an index here and last is when you have to switch to a default content what does default content means when you have to come out of a frame so def sorry default content method is used and we are done okay any questions in frame handling okay then let's quickly complete the next one next one we have is JavaScript so I'll create a class and I'll call it JavaScript control and it will be implements JavaScript add unimplemented methods okay so the first one is executing JavaScript okay so uh, here uh, just to recall uh, the class when we covered JavaScript again we need instance of browser so let me quickly do that it will be web driver driver equal to sorry and then Java script control and here it will be web driver driver and this dot driver equal to driver now the next first method is execute JavaScript okay so uh, for this uh, there is a class called JavaScript executor you have to take one from org.openq.selenium let's say it's variable I'm calling as JS engine okay then you need to initialize this JS engine it will be let me do that in the same line equal to uh, whatever is your driver instance you have to typecast that with JavaScript executor okay so I'm not repeating this concept again uh, have done it multiple times now that what is this typecasting if you have any question do let me know and here it will be JS engine dot what you have to do execute JavaScript so it will be execute script with script script to execute second parameter I don't need and we are done clear any questions in this okay now if you'll see this part this line will repeat in all the methods so I'll just take it out and put it in a private method so it will be private then you need to inst return instance of JavaScript executor so get JS executor and it will be this then return JS engine okay and here it will be get JS executor
and this is done okay in the next one here we will be doing the same thing execute uh, script but the script to execute we have to write okay so I'll be writing here string let's say I'm calling it as JS command equal to what will be the command string dot format command will be window dot uh, it should be in small scroll by and then in the arguments you will be passing percent d comma percent d and here the variables will be x comma y okay so the first percent d will be your x and second percent d will be your y so first you will pass x second you will pass y and this is the command which you need to execute so here it will be js command so this is how you can perform scroll down operation clear so in one of the uh, in one of the scenario when we were doing ebay project there i did this this scroll down so i just took out that method and put it in javascript executor next we have is with a return value so everything will remain same only it just start returning a value okay so one more thing you need to because the return type of this will be an object you have to convert it into string okay so if any JavaScript returns a string value you can use the last one clear any questions now Can you just remind us when we did the JavaScripting? Uh, in eBay project when we were doing scroll down operation. So there were two ways we did scroll down. Uh, if you recall we were doing, uh, we were fetching all the elements. First we fetched without any scroll down. Then we fetched using JavaScript scroll down. And then we fetched using uh, uh, mouse operation scroll down. I'll show you. This was your project, right? I need to go to that lecture again. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, in this eBay project, so these were the methods. Scroll down when we were doing JavaScript. Then uh, this was scroll down via JavaScript. And this was uh, scroll down via mouse operation. So you can go through uh, recordings again. And if any problem, do let me know. I'll cover it up again. That's why I asked you. I'll go through that again. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Okay. So what else is left? Okay, so JavaScript is also done. Mouse operation is run. Screenshot I'll take up later because uh, here you need to understand uh, file handling first and file handling is not covered. So once we'll cover uh, Excel utility, before that I'll teach file handling and uh, input output streams. So there probably I'll discuss this. Okay. And uh, then uh, what else is left window handling is left which is again five minutes of task so let me complete it first and then we'll go and break so I'll say window controls implements window handling add an implemented method so here again you need instance of your driver so let me quickly define that private 
web driver driver and Uh, let me quickly create the constructor. It will be window control. Web driver driver and it will be <laughs> this dot driver equal to driver. So first one is switch to child window. Okay, so how can you do that? It will be driver dot switch to dot uh, window, and here you need to pass the child window, right? So first we need to get the child window. It will be string. Let's say I'm calling it child window. Okay, and it will be child window equal to driver dot get window handles okay you will convert it into an array same logic we did earlier first to string okay and here we will pass child window so what we are doing here is <coughs> we have uh, let's say uh, multiple windows are open or you can say uh, the this scenario this particular method will be used when let's say you have a window open and you clicked on a link a new child window opened now you want to switch to that okay so it's like switch to first child window so what you will be doing a string child window I created in uh, the string variable and we need the uh, session ID or you can say window handle of the second window so what I did on my browser I called a method called get and uh, get window handles this returned me a set of all the window handles of all the open windows we converted that into an array then accessed its first element and then we converted it into a string okay so it gives me a string value we put that into child window then uh, driver dot switch to dot window so again we have done this any questions in it Okay, so the next one is when um, when you are already given with a window handle, so you don't need to uh, find the window handle; it's already given to you. So just method will be driver dot switch to window, and window handle is given. Okay, next is switch to any window if your child window index is given. That means here window handle was given session ID was given here you just have given that you want to switch to third window or fourth window it's not given that you um, this um, only index is given the rest everything you have to calculate so the logic will remain same what we did in the first method here instead of one because it is not first child it will be any child here you'll just pass the child window index so if you'll pass 0 it will remain on the same one if you'll pass 1 it will go to first child if you'll pass 2 it will go to second child and so on so a generic method because uh, this is one of the one of the topic which I have heard that most of the interviewers ask this question because many of many of my students have uh, asked me this uh, question so I added that here that how to switch to nth window maybe third or fourth or so on okay any questions Okay, so this ends all our classes which we had to cover. Okay, last one is also there. That is get window handle. So again, I can 
get window handle okay it will be driver sorry driver dot get window handle I don't know why I created this method and the last one is get window handles driver dot get window handles yeah. done so if you'll see all the met all the classes are done only screenshot is left which I'll cover once I'll cover uh, the last one uh, I mean uh, the Excel sheet okay before that after that I'll cover the screenshot rest everything is done so any questions now okay so first layer of our framework is done that is this automation layer is done okay we completed all the contracts we completed all the implementations so this layer is done and actually this was the biggest uh, layer rest won't take much time I mean we will be able to complete multiple layers in uh, together so next what we'll do is we'll start with the application layer but before we uh, complete application layer we need to understand different design patterns so the next topic we are going to start is design patterns we'll be covering all the three design patterns then we'll come into a common conclusion which one to use and most probably everyone will choose page factory once we'll uh, choose that then we will start writing um, uh, pages for our application under test then uh, we'll also start creating certain utilities okay or uh, maybe before I start design pattern I can complete one of the weight utility okay so let's go on a break and after that I'll uh, first complete the one of the utility one of the utility that is weight utility and then we'll come to design patterns okay
I'm sorry guys I just went out really sorry so can we start okay uh, so let's quickly start with uh, okay so let's first complete the weight utility and then we'll come to um, design patterns okay so in my utilities I'll be creating first utility and we'll call it weight utils uh, okay weight utility will be one we will be using for uh, different types of weights all our uh, different type of explicit weight uh, we'll be adding so the first weight which I need here is uh, many a times when you're developing you need this thread dot sleep okay it is uh, very frequently used so uh, first weight I'll write is public static void weight for seconds Okay, and for how much second let's say int uh, seconds okay and here you can also say throws exception and it will be thread dot sleep and whatever second you are putting in 2000 so you don't have to call thread dot sleep again and again just call wait utils dot wait for a second and give how many seconds you want one second two seconds why I'm multiplying by thousand because thread dot sleep take the input in milliseconds so I just converted uh, your uh, seconds into milliseconds here okay so this is wait for seconds next uh, next we need some type of uh, explicit weights okay so the first one which we'll be needing is and the most used one is from my experience I'm telling this wait till element visible this is 70% of the time used uh, this particular weight okay what all you need you need first of all instance of browser so I'll say drive web driver uh, driver then you need web element so I'll be passing web element element and you also need uh, time in seconds so I'll say time in seconds okay so this is my method now here first of all you need instance of web driver weight so it will be web driver weight weight equal to new web driver weight okay so driver instance you will be passing time and seconds you will be passing next what is the condition condition is wait dot until and here you need to put the condition so the condition will be which class has condition expected conditions dot now here is the list of conditions which one I'm saying I'm saying wait till element is present wait till element visible so here we can put a condition visibility of vis visibility of the first one visibility of this one element okay if you are not passing web element you are passing the um, uh, locator then you can use this visibility of uh, element located the fourth one so you can use the first one you, you can use the first one fourth one currently I'm passing the web element so I'll be using the first one visibility of element and then this is the element and we are done okay so this is the first one similarly and again I'll keep this static so that I don't have to create its instance next one will be 
public static void wait till whatever you want now alert is present this could be one uh, this could be one uh, wait command so here what all you need you need uh, web driver instance and you need time so it will be uh, long time in seconds and this part will repeat this part will repeat so I can create a private method for this it will be private a return type will be web driver wait get wait and here it will be return wait and before that I'll just copy this statement put it here and here it will be get wait okay so there could be and uh, this needs okay just a second you will be needing both these variables in here okay and uh, one more thing this also needs to be made static because my this method is static and here I'll pass driver and element not element time in seconds now what the method this entire bit is not applicable for argument Okay, my bad here I need to pass Okay, all the errors are gone Okay, now I'll just get this and you can put a condition wait until expected condition expected conditions dot alert is present okay so this will be the one uh, similarly you can have as many uh, condition as you want the conditions you can just uh, check from here okay and for each condition you can have one method uh, what all are frequently used two I just showed you one is one um, uh, it one is alert is present next is wait till element visible you can also say wait till element is present wait till element uh, become invisible wait till element uh, uh, element get selected is checked is so there can be hundreds of conditions these are the few ones and as and when you will need any uh, wait statement you can keep on adding clear any questions now okay and this is one of the important indication as well like I ask this question a lot what all methods you have in your wait utility so yeah people sometimes answer well sometimes they just say we don't have any weight utility so yeah depends on how you are doing it fine so we are done with the weight utility as well this is one of the example we had other utilities I'll keep on creating next is design patterns so let's start with the design pattern and for that I'll create another package 
So this package won't be a part of your framework. It's just for your learning and I'm keeping in the same one so that you can learn you can just revise your design patterns together okay so the first design pattern we are going to cover will be uh, object repository okay so I'll create a class and I'll call it Amazon uh, POM one style okay why POM will you will get to know Okay, POM stand for page object model. Let me quickly open its uh, article as well. Okay, so the first uh, here we will be going in design patterns yeah okay so design button that is page object model I'll be starting with it and uh, actually this pod, pod sorry page object tree is a part of page object model so I'll explain you when you'll call it a POM and when you'll call it a page object repository okay so here in the previous tutorials we have learned how to automate scenarios using Selenium WebDriver. This tutorial will help you understand the page object model. It is important to write your code and automation scripts in, in a maintainable, reusable and extendable manner. These key factors will distinguish you as a good automation tester. Design patterns and framework defines the standard of writing code. They help you in maintaining reusability and readability. POM is one such design pattern. In page object model, there is one to one mapping between the Java classes and the pages uh, pages of application under test. So whatever application you are testing in that, let's say there are four or five uh, pages are there. So for each page, there will be one Java class which is created. Let's say you have login page for login page. You had one class for um, home page. You have one class for um, maybe check out you have a, another class and so on so there will always be a one-to-one -one mapping okay uh, and people generally get confused between design patterns and frameworks so POM is a design pattern it's not a framework it's an old concept which developers are using uh, from long to uh, maintain and re maintainability reusability and readability uh, purpose okay if I talk about the first design then in that you will have a class which will have all the web elements defined for a particular page say for example if I'm taking login page for login page all the web elements which are required you will define in one of the class so this class will have only web elements that's why I'm calling it as a as an object repository because it will have all the elements as a repository okay and there will be another class in which you will call the methods okay we will create the methods and you'll call these web elements so that's why this first way of form is is more of an object repository okay let me quickly complete it so here uh, if I'm writing this Amazon POM one style where we will be writing all the web elements which will be there on the first page of Amazon let's say I'm talking about amazon.in okay so on this page let's say I'm sim because this is a very big website so I'll just take a section of it and we will just take uh, logging uh, not logging searching a product here okay so I'll search for a product from the drop down I'll select the category and then click on search button this is what I want to do okay so for this what all things you need you need this drop down you need the search box and you need the search button right so here we will define all these web elements so the first web element will be search box okay second web element will be search 
button and third will be search list okay so these are the three web elements we have defined or I can better call it search category and then you also need a select instance of select class uh, why you need instance of select class why you need this instance of select class because this search category is more or less a drop down okay now uh, I have defined all the web elements like this on a page whichever web element you find just define them here then next step will be I have to initialize all of them so I'll say Amazon pom style one so I'll create its constructor again you need instance of web driver so here we will be passing the instance of web driver it will be web driver driver and all these elements will initialize here so the first one is search box equal to driver dot find element by dot let's see this search box how it is given so if I inspect it is HTML Okay. so you can see it's an input type is text ID is this one so I can use ID here and you can pass this value so the first one is defined right now other one next is so we are defined search box next will be search button search button equal to driver dot find element by dot again for button I have to see what exactly is given so I'll just inspect that element and it's a type submit value equal to go so I have to write it six path I'll say x path double slash input and in the square bracket at value equal to go okay so second one is also done then we need search category so it will be search category equal to driver dot find element so for drop down let's see what is given so it's a select class which has which has an ID so let's quickly take the ID by dot ID and the value will be this so all web elements are defined and we need to uh, initialize category drop down so it will be news okay I guess I don't need it because uh, for drop downs we have a separate class so I don't need so we created one drop down controls right so we'll be using that so all the web elements are defined like this on that page whatever web elements are used define all of them if let's say you are using uh, you you're working on uh, uh, facebook.com and login page of facebook.com has many elements right you have username you have password you have button uh, login button then you have that complete sign up form where you have first name last name phone number mobile number uh, email address then uh, drop downs to select the date uh, date and so on okay so define all of them one by one as a web element and then initialize them in the constructor so this is your object repository this class will not have anything extra it will have only and only web elements now what is the benefit of this benefit is let's say if something changes in one of the web element then you don't have to go at multiple places and change there is one place you know on my login page 
third element has changed so you will go to your login page in java classes in, in, in java classes and change the third element okay you don't have to uh, change it at multiple locations so that's the benefit of having um, this kind of uh, approach where you will have one class which will have all the web elements clear okay now I'll uh, quickly demo it so here I'll create a class and I'll call it demo Amazon form one style and in this we will, will also be using all the classes which we have created uh, in above in this common lips okay we'll not be writing anything related to selenium here we'll just be calling methods from that so the first step will be uh, we need to initialize the browser so it will be common driver driver equal to new common driver okay and you need to change the browser it will be Chrome okay what I did okay and this needs to be try catch I mean uh, wrapped into try catch okay after this next step will be first of all we will be setting page load timeout let's say 60 seconds next will be I need to set element detection timeout so it will be let's say 10 seconds next will be you need to navigate to a URL and let's say URL will be HTTP Amazon.n after navigating to this URL uh, rest everything will work like I okay thanks Jason I typo it's Chrome fine and at the end we need to close the browser as well so that we can do in finally block remember we we looked at finally block if something goes wrong then also uh, we can uh, close it but for that I need to take out my common driver instance out of this and now in the finally block I can simply say driver dot uh, sorry it will be common driver common driver dot close all process so we are putting it in uh, finally block why finally block uh, because this can this will be the last method to be called okay uh, but uh, this method also throws an exception so we need to surround this also with a try catch so you can see even your Okay, now also it's throwing an error local area may not have been initialized I initialized it what now okay I cannot do this because this also okay fine I'll just move it out of finally we'll see this later I mean how you can do this otherwise I need to change the code and then we'll just close the browser fine now because in actual project like when we'll actually be doing it will not be putting uh, like this that time I'll, I'll show you how you will put how, how you will be doing it okay now uh, we navigated to the URL and in between we have to do the other things okay so uh, what all you need in this first of all you need to 
interact with the text box so I'll create instance of text box control let's say I'll call it text box equal to new text box controls my text box is initialized next you will be uh, needing drop down so I'll be saying drop down control let's say drop down equal to new drop down controls and done then we need common elements because we need to click on it so it will be common elements let's say common element equal to new common element sorry it is common element control I believe yeah common element control yeah so all the web elements are all the things things are defined now you also need instance of Amazon home page so it will be Amazon POM1 style let's say I'm calling it as home page equal to new Amazon this and this needs instance of web driver so how will you get driver it will be common driver dot the method is just a second common driver dot get driver is the method this returns us the instance of web driver and then it will be home page dot uh, what yeah okay so all the initialization things is done now we need to write our logic so these things which you're seeing uh, that yeah it is taking a lot of time in initializing these you'll do only once after that you just have to write your logic so here now next will be what all you need uh, first thing is I'll be searching a product right so to search a product I need to write into a search box so it will be text box dot set text which element home page dot search okay why they are not available okay they are not available because they are not public okay so access modifier was wrong because I told this was default and this demo home page style is another package so we were not able to see now you can see them so search box and what product you want to search let's say Apple watch okay then next is you need to select from a drop down right so it will be drop down dot select via visible text what you have to search um, element will be home page dot select uh, search category and what you want to search let's say watches okay and then last you have to click so it will be common element dot click where on which element home page dot search button and our scenario is done so uh, see all your elements here nowhere you are defining your elements elements are all of them are in this and you are just using those here and calling them okay now you might be thinking that all these this is a very long process but in real time projects uh, like when will actually write come to our uh, application layer then you will see that these things are written once and done they will not be written again okay you'll be just calling uh, methods like the initial part will come in invoke browser okay uh, middle part will be like initialization that will be done in somewhere in one of the class and then other classes will just inherit them uh, it's just that I was I'm just teaching uh, currently the design patterns that's why we are writing them here okay and uh, 
at the end we will be writing our logic and then closing the browser so I like execute it now right click run as it got hang let it get okay so let's execute So you can see it has searched for Apple watches from the drop down is selected watches and then clicked on the search button okay so this is first design pattern where all your web elements are defined in one class okay all your web elements are defined in one class and we will be using it in other class okay any questions so why we are calling it object repository because the first one has only web elements so it's it's derived from a tool known as qtp in qtp there is a concept of uh, object repository where in one location all the objects are defined so they we call that as object repository okay so moving on to the second design pattern if you don't have any questions I'll just copy this Amazon POM1 paste it again we'll change this logic only so here we'll call it POM2 okay now in this POM2 uh, what we do is see if we'll go to design button here one class was there where we had only web elements methods were there in the class B whereas in the second form style all your web elements and the methods also will be in the first class in the same class only okay so here I'll be writing public void uh, let's say my method was search product so it will be search product which product you are searching for let's say uh, string product and string uh, category okay and when you are searching for the product it will be uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, so web elements are already defined here. Okay, we need uh, those extra things. Uh, let me take out from here. Okay, you will be needing um, these text box controls and all. So I'll just copy them and will paste here. Okay, so it will be public before this also I'll put public and before this also I'll put public also uh, these needs to be in slides in the constructor
okay all these web elements uh, first we have defined the web elements then we have defined all the classes which we are going to use and then um, all the methods as well uh, oh, sorry all the web elements are initialized and now here we'll write the logic okay so the logic part also I can copy paste uh, yeah okay let me write it myself so here we need to search a product so first of all it will be text box dot what you want to do set text which element search box and what do you want to write product right next so this also I can say throws exception next will be after writing into search box next will be selecting from a drop down so it will be drop down dot select via visible text what from where search category and what is the visible text the category and after that next will be drop down dot uh, click not drop down it will be common element so it will be common element dot click where on search button and done okay now what we did is the logic part we moved out of here to this to this like this whatever possible scenarios are there on that page write them one by one okay so next will be maybe you're looking for something else you can put here and so on okay so we will also I'll also create another class and here we'll say demo uh, Amazon Pom 2 style we'll keep this public static word main checked and in this it will be Amazon okay so again this common driver part will remain same so I'll just copy paste it then we need Amazon form 2 style let's say I'll call it home page equal to new Amazon form 2 style it will be common driver dot get driver now all these methods are expected to throw exceptions so let's surround them with try catch okay at the last we can simply common driver dot close all browsers and in between we'll write our logic so it will be just one line home page dot uh, search product which product let's say Apple watch and category will be watches okay one more thing when you are defining this all your elements which you have defined they should not be public they should be private why they are private because we don't want these elements to be we don't want these elements to be affected by shift control O. Oh, this will remove all unwanted imports we don't want these elements to be affected by outside world okay so in POM 2 you can see uh, this part is like always you have to do so uh, later on we'll move it into one method called invoke browser this part also you'll do again and again so we'll move this also and actual logic will be this okay now here see what we are achieving we are achieving many things from oops also object oriented programming what we are achieving data hiding your data 
uh, your implementation is hidden in this class called Amazon POM2 whereas when you are actually writing the logic you are just doing search product you know about the search product only how this is implemented is something which is hidden from this class right that is there in this okay so uh, what benefit you can get if you have all these classes created with all the possible methods then the writing the scripts or actual test cases will just be like calling methods from there that means this particular class even somebody who has very little knowledge in in Java or is a manual tester can also uh, start writing these methods okay so this is the benefit of uh, uh, defining this way any questions now so these are two design patterns we have covered so the first one is like an object repository in which in one of the class you will have only web elements second in which uh, you have all the web elements and all the possible methods also possible on that page will be defined okay now there will be one limitation to it and uh, that limitation will discuss in the next class and will solve it using page factory okay so why I'm saying we'll discuss in the next class because I want you to find out I'll give you a hint see what happens when you search for a product and then the result what you're getting let's say you got search for Apple watch and you're getting this result try writing this result try getting this value this uh, one of 16 of this value using the design pattern we have learned both of the design pattern and share your observations what do you will get okay what I want is after you search the product after that just add one more thing getting this value so it's very easy you can find out its web element it's a span uh, which has this value okay and before that it has an heading okay it's it's basically a div uh, this div that is this s first column so it has a class or you can see this uh, h1 you can just fetch this text also h1 okay so it has an id s result count you can simply fetch value from it try following um, any of the two design pattern because uh, for this scenario both will be same okay use any one of the two design patterns and try getting this value and see what is your observation I want you to get what what error you are getting or actually you are able to do it okay so if you are able to do it very good if you are not able to do it then what is the error I want you to try it okay then we'll solve if there will be any issue Uh, guys, just give me a minute. Okay, so we can end our session here. If you have any question, do let me know. I'm just coming in two minutes. Uh, Anshu, can we do it? Uh, I mean, after some time, maybe uh, today evening.